Hello everyone. In this episode, I wanted to give you an introduction of how to put skin textures onto 3D characters, like in our case, the Genesis figure. And there are multiple ways of doing it. So I thought I'm going to make multiple videos of this. And this one deals with how to do this in Blender, Blender 3.2. And I'm going to use a technique called texture painting for this. So it's a bit of a lengthy video. There's some chapter points in the description. You can also make me talk faster with a little gear icon at the bottom right. If you switch that to two, then I talk twice as fast. Or you can make me slower if you'd like to hear me even slower than I usually go. So um, yes, that is uh, that is all coming up. So technically, um, let me show you what we're doing here while I, while I talk you through this. This is a character I've wrapped with R3DS wrap, and I have some matching skin textures that go and match her as well. There is two ways of doing this with Blender, kind of an easy way to get started. And that's the one that will kind of get you halfway and you can just put the finishing touches on it or you can do it completely from scratch. So I'll show you both ways of how to deal with this. The easiest way is actually to start with something like a skin builder skin, uh, something and I'm going to use my stream safe textures just so that I can show you the process and I'll apply this. If you go and export this character out here, then you can do so with maps. And if you collect the maps, then they'll all be set up already in Blender and you can go and do other things with them, like basically paint on top of it. Now this won't give you transparency value. For that, you need to have kind of the, use a more advanced option. Let's go over to the parameters tab under mesh resolution, change your character to base resolution. Before we export her out, there is actually something that you might find useful that comes with the Genesis starter essentials. If you head over to literally anywhere like where it says um, figures, anything that brings up in the smart content, this little blue icon here, the Genesis 8 starter essentials. Under poses at the very bottom, you find these two things, which are UV prep poses, one for the man, one for the woman. And if you click those, then the character is going to close their eyes and spread their fingers and things like nipples are going to come out and stuff. And this is just so that you can go and paint this better from all sides. So things that are close together, you won't be able to texture inside. So there's no way that you can texture in between the fingers. So hence they have this pose that lets this, um, that, that makes this that makes whoops that makes this happen so i recommend you do that that also closes her eyes so we can texture the eyelids there i need a little correction more there on the eyes they don't quite close properly but yeah there we go this is what we need to do or this is this recommended that you do that and then we can go and export her out with the character selected file export i'll go and make myself a new folder on the desktop i'll call that blender texture painting And in here, I'm going to call her Anne That is her name. And under the preset here, I'll go and use Das Studio to begin with. And I'll make a few strategic adjustments here. Namely, the first one is I'm going to change the scale to 1%, just so that one meter in Das Studio is also going to appear as one meter in Blender. Next, I'm going to use here the filter objects, and I'm going to leave selected roots checked. So I'll do that is so that you don't have to worry about eyelids and uh, tear ducts and, and I, sorry, not eyelids, but eyelashes and tear ducts and clothing. If that is parented to your character, that would all be merged into the figure. And we don't want that. We want to split those things out. Then at the bottom here, under right surfaces, I'm going to leave that tick, but I'm switching it over from original to collect. And what that'll do is essentially grab the diffuse maps from my content library and put them into a separate folder. And this is kind of nice because it lets us get started with something that we can just overpaint without having to set up the text just manually in Blender. Even though that is probably what you want to do if you were painting things like overlays for which you need a transparent layer. Let me go and remove the cube, import my character here. OBJ and under geometry, I don't want to split this and I'm going to leave the poly groups intact. Everything else is as it is. Dot on the numpad will zoom in on my character and it looks like she doesn't quite have textures on, but that is just because we're in the kind of a 
smooth shaded preview that doesn't display textures. If you change this over here to the second icon, which is going to be the material preview mode, then you give Blender a second and then all the textures should appear. And then I'm referencing the ones that are in this little folder. Let me actually show you where that is. So on my desktop here, under Blender Texture Painting, there's this folder here called Maps that uh, Dash Studio has made. And inside there, these are the maps that come with the character that we've exported. So when we start drawing something or texture painting, the information is going to end up on these maps seamlessly, which is kind of nice. So that's where that is. Just make a mental note of that if you want to find your maps. So click off the character, click on it again so that we, that's just kind of a blender thing. I'll, I don't really know why that is. Uh, now we can start going and uh, start to texture the character. So over here where it says object mode, switch that over to texture paint. You can, if you want, there's a whole texture painting menu here, well, it's like, a, like a workspace, and that lets you go and paint both in 2D as well as in 3D. So if you're interested in that, sometimes you want to maybe put down paint strokes in a 2D view, then you can do that. I won't use it because I prefer to do it in the large viewport here. So switch this over to texture paint, and then we can get going. If we wanted to get going with simple paint strokes, we could literally start right away. So let me demonstrate. Just by left clicking and dragging over the figure, you can lay down paint. And it works across seams by default. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to worry about that. Left click and drag. Uh, depending on where you start, Blender might not perform very well. So that has to do with how complex the geometry is that it needs to paint across. So if I go and do this on the back, it's no problem really. But if I go over to the head, then I suppose more calculations are necessary. And if you do this through the ears, then you know it, there's, you can tell there's a bit of a lag of performance there. But uh, you can do it and it, it works across the seams uh, without any issues there. If we were to have a look at these paint strokes, that is better in the texture painting tab here. You can see that if I just switch my overlays off here, you can see that the white stuff is where my paint strokes have ended up. And I have that on a per udim tile. You can also go and just pick an image that you want to look at. So this was for the torso here. But if you wanted to have a look at, the, well, we didn't do anything on the legs, but maybe the face here. We've got something on the ear here. So this is where the paint strokes are ending up. So they're not separated currently from the textures. The textures are being overwritten. Just something to keep in mind. I'll go and undo, like Control Z, I'll undo a few steps here, like so, and I'll get going with a texture, with an overlay texture. So that's one of those things that you would project like a stencil and then rub on to the character. To do that, head over here to texture. Texture is one of those things that is, so there's kind of this, this word creeps up several times. In this case, we mean the texture we paint with, so not the texture we're painting onto or the one that is applied to the character right now it's the thing we want to paint with so if you click that you can create yourself a new one you can have multiple so you could have one for the front picture and then one for the side and one for the back those would be your textures you paint with so i'm going to go and create one and i'm going to call that one front just so that I know what that is. And very important, from tiled, change this over to stencil. So that then becomes a stencil that we can rub on to the character. And when I do that, I can define a picture. These are the transformations that we're going to speak about in a moment. If you click this little icon here, then a menu at the bottom right will open. I will show you where that is. It's essentially the same as clicking this button here that or this this menu that has that checkerboard icon on it and that lets us load in a texture with which we paint so that's why i mean it's confusing a texture is what we've just set up the way we said new that's essentially a container for something that now holds a picture with which we paint it's a little bit confusing but this is where that would be so let me open that up it is beneficial if we had square textures. Often these images from 3DSK and other sources, they don't exactly come as squares, in which case you can scale them disproportionately. But I've got some that I've made into square. So this is essentially this here and that. It's the same picture, but this one I've padded so that it's exactly square. And the benefit of that is that I don't have to 
rejig the aspect ratio the moment I load it. So I'm going to use this one here, load it in, and now I have a stencil here. I can still move my viewport like this now, and I can move the stencil with the right click. So right click and drag to position the stencil. To scale it up or down, you hold down shift. So shift and right click will make it larger or smaller. If you want to scale it not in both directions, but in just one axis, you hold down shift, right click, then tap X, and then you move the mouse. So that is shift, right click, and X. Or you can go shift, right click, and tap Y, then it goes in the other direction here. You can also, or you can still just right click and move the stencil. If you wanted to rotate it, you can go and hold down control while you right click. That'll rotate the stencil. And you can then still scale it up and so forth. If you've screwed it up and you want to reset it, there's a way to do this. That's up, up here on the texture menu. If you click that, then you have the reset transform option. And that'll bring the stencil back to where it was before. Now, the trick with stencil painting is that you need to find the right relationship between how your 3D model looks and how the correct corresponding picture looks with the figure. So if we start with maybe the, the face here, if I go and zoom in on my figure like so, I'm not exactly looking from the front. So you're benefiting from the orthographic viewports. And in Blender, you can get that done on the numpad. So the number one on the numpad will show you the model directly from the front. Now notice that when I go and move it, you'll see that the perspective changes. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. Sometimes you want to see the perspective, sometimes you don't. I believe my version of Blender is set up that automatically when I move this again into the user viewport, so to say, the perspective changes from orthographic to perspective view. But you can do this manually. So you press one on the numpad to look at it from the front. And number three is from the side. And number seven is from the top. And you can also toggle perspective and orthographic views with the number five on the numpad. So this is with perspective, this is without, but it's still from the front. It's just, you know, with perspective now. So that's an important consideration. Oh yeah, if you don't want to see the front, if you'd rather see the back, hold down control and tap the number one on the numpad. Likewise, three would be from, well, her left, I guess. Control three on the numpad would be from her right. And likewise, number seven, control seven would then be from the bottom. That's how you can get these orthographic viewports. But if you sometimes, so if I go and line up my stencil now here with the right click, and then I go and hit down shift, and I go and try to line this up, we're going to see that this isn't going to work great because the photo was, of course, taken with perspective. So even if I try to line this up, it's not going to work exactly. So now the eyes are correct, but the rest of the body isn't. And that is because uh, if I go and just move that out to the side a little bit here, there we go, and uh, bring my perspective back. This has perspective, but it's too much. This has got too little. So what are we going to do about it? Let's go into perspective mode with the number five and set up the focal length of my camera. So that happens with the N key. I know it's a lot to take in, but you know it'll grow on you. And I just wanted to give you the, the principles here. So N to open up that tool shelf here. Then we head over to the view, and here we see the focal length of the camera that is being used by default, which is 50 millimeters. So if we change this to something that is equivalent to what we see in the pictures, make that a bit longer, make maybe 80, kind of depends. Now we can go and zoom out. Uh, if I do this, if I overdo this, like if I type in 120, and I zoom out, I can see that the perspective now gets flattened out. So as a result now, my picture might work out a little better than it did before. You see that? Now the eyes and the shoulders match up more or better than they did when it was on 50 millimeters. It's still not entirely perfect, but this is something that lets you adjust a way to, you know, to kind of get there. I might just leave it on 120 and show you how the brushing in process works. Maybe make it a little bit larger, so just so that approximately this lines up now. So I've got, whoops, I've got, 
I've got the eyes kind of where they need to be, the ears are kind of where they need to be, just roughly. So if I go and left click and drag now, I'll go and transfer the texture over to the model. And if I go and just move my model around, I can see what's happened here. And it's not painted in with the correct color, it's too dark. And that is because I've forgotten to change it. it that's up here. Uh, these are two colors. So this is for the mask color, I believe. And this is for the actual color we're painting with. And I happen to be painting with the dark gray. I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to go and turn this to white. And I'm going to go and hit Control Z to undo what I've just done here. Have a look at it from the front. And now maybe I'll go and line up the shoulders a little bit and paint in the, the shoulders here left click and drag and performance is okay but it could literally tank at any moment the moment blender has to calculate too much it's gonna it's gonna have a major issue so left click and drag and brush your image onto onto the model left click and drag to have a look what's happened yeah i'm painting in the bra and that seems to be okay so the back and the sides we do that with different images but yeah that is essentially how i do it uh, num keys one and three and seven or control one control three and control seven and then five to enable and disable perspective in your picture and then you go and move the model bit by bit and you move the stencil with the right click and then very carefully, you try your absolute best to paint in details that you want to see there. So yeah, it's uh, it'll it'll take a while, and you're gonna have to move the stencil around a lot. And I don't really know how how people have the patience to do this, but I, I gather this is what they do. As I said, it's uh, you you use a lot of other reference pictures as alongside it and you usually also have something like a base layer that you start with uh, from made from kind of seamless skin tiles that sort of thing um, biscuits has a video on her channel in which she shows yeah see the perspective just isn't lining up uh, properly so you're gonna you're gonna just take it with a grain of salt and just approximate everything and it does help if you have something that you can orient yourself uh, with but again, broad strokes first with roughed in details, and then you just go and uh, make it more detailed as, as your work progresses. If Blender's performance tanks, it can have to do with texture sizes. I should really do this with my Wacom pen. That is, that is even better. If you have a Wacom tablet and a pen, it is much easier to texture these things in. There's also things, if you do have a pen, there's these little icons up here. They allow you to use pressure sensitivity to brush the textures in. You don't have to use it. If you don't want to use it, just switch it off like so. Now I'm painting with 100% strength while I'm moving my pen here. And if I click this, then my strength isn't one. It's literally, if I press light, I paint in a light stroke. If I press hard, I paint in a much more intense stroke. So it kind of depends. I think for a, for just a, a wash, this will, this will work nicely. And then right click to move that stencil. Let's see if we get the legs going. So yeah, legs I have to do individually. One here. Uh, that's the other thing Blender doesn't seem to like. If you have large textures and you move your mouse a lot, there appears to be uh, quite a bit of lag there. But um, yeah, if you do it nice and slow, this is an occasion where I need to rotate my image now. Yeah, there we go. So usually you use this in conjunction with kind of a base layer. And then you work your way through this for the whole character. And then you can use other textures. You can create yourself another texture here and then use a side one or front one. This is the thing that you use to create a new texture. And then you click this icon again and that'll get you back to the bottom right here that lets you replace the image for the next texture. And that's kind of neat. So eventually you're going to have a kind of, you know, a few textures to choose from in this list here. Now, when I say this might not be the way you want to work is because... I'm going to go and switch my texture off just by clicking that little X icon here, then it's, then it's gone. So it's kind of, you know, my, my handy work here. Um, I say this isn't 
might not be the way you want to work if you want to add something to a character like an overlay like a like a face paint or like a body paint type thing then you wouldn't do this because your paint strokes are combined with the existing textures so for that you might want to start with a gray character that doesn't have textures and then set them up yourself let me show you how that works so this is something that we need to use the shading tab for and i'm going to show you this with the uh, uh, with a body map so that we basically replace it completely so at the on the right here find that little material properties icon and that lets you pick each of the material zones i'm going to use the body zone and in here this is the texture that we've just painted in brutally um, this node here is the texture node and that lets us create and specify another one so the node setup is this is the shader into the shader we have a image texture node that goes into the base channel and that's the one we're painting but in this this is not actually the texture this is just a node that holds a texture file and that is what we specify here that's what's automatically been set up because um, we had collected the maps from das studio if you wanted to create a new texture to put that in here you can use this window over here you can either use this button here that creates a new image or you can go and use this from here like image new that'll do the same thing and that lets us create a new image that we can use as a texture so i'm going to call this one uh, new body and i'm going to change the size to 4k texture because the original was 4k so 4096 by 1496 i don't i can use an alpha channel and this is the background color so maybe i'm going to use something like a medium gray black is maybe a little bit harsh there alpha means we're painting with transparency hit ok and that is now our image so it's just a, a whole block there this is just the new image and blender has created that kind of in its blend file if we're done with painting we can go and export it later via this button here image and then save as so that lets you export the image from blender so that you can use it inside das studio but for now the first thing that we need to do is add it to our texture node here and that happens here i'll pick new body and you can see what happens to my body it turns gray so if you do that and you do this essentially with every single node that you're painting you can be sure that the paint strokes that you're making for like an overlay will have an alpha channel with there so that means you can use the resulting texture as something like an lie uh, for a layered image editor or you can build yourself a geo shell from it or something like that that could be used in addition to an existing texture that's that's the way to do it and that then once again back on your texture painting workspace you can now go and pick that texture again if you wanted to here it is and uh, and go move it around scale it up or down and you know try again essentially or if you don't want to paint with existing image textures you can also go and just paint with paint strokes and the colors you want so like you know pick something blue f will change the size of your brush by the way and if we now start to paint we can see paint strokes appear and those you can now go and export and that is something you could go and uh, put onto your character with a layered image editor or with a geo shell there we go so that's how you do it and also this is the other thing that i'm being asked uh, quite a bit how do you paint across seams well blender makes that kind of automatic so to say these are the seams and you paint seamlessly across them there we go one final thing how to export these maps so that was once again the easiest thing is to go to the shading tab here and then if you if like if this was our texture now the new body then you go to this little menu here and say image save as it'll also be safe when you save your blend file but it's not an external image unlike our existing textures that have just been overwritten this texture exists only inside blender so we need to say save as and then i can go and put that maybe uh, just here on our in our folder i'll just call it new body and i can say save it with an alpha channel here as a png hit save image takes a second 
and that's where that is now. There we go. Alpha channel you have to extract in Photoshop, but that is basically all I can tell you about texture painting in Blender. I have yet to do it for a full character because it's a ton of work. There are better tools out there. So if you find that your performance in Blender struggles as you apply paint strokes, it's not you, it's Blender. It's kind of a known phenomenon. Make short strokes. So that's the other thing, um, something to keep in mind. If you, if you know, if you look at the size of the brush, it'll stay the same. So if I click F and then make it slightly larger, it'll stay the same no matter how far away the figure is. So as a result, this paints in a huge amount on my character, whereas when I'm zoomed in, it doesn't paint so much. And the more Blender has to do on a model, the more it, it kind of struggles to put things down, especially if you have like an 8K texture that you paint with like an 8K stencil and then you paint onto a 4K texture and you do that on a surface that has a lot of curvature like the face here. There's a lot of projection calculations going on. So it's, um, it's one of those things. I'm planning to do this for a full character, but I'm not quite at that point yet where I have the time to do this. I will also show you how to use a somewhat easier way to paint this in through Substance Painter. That's another way. They have a unique way in which you can project textures from multiple angles onto the whole character. And you can use that in conjunction with them doing touch-ups on top of a character. So that is my plan. But as I said, I'm still very much learning and I'm still very much new to this. But uh, that is the principle. I hope this helps. If you do have any questions, then do let me know below in the comments. And I hope I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.